So we've already talked a little bit about RAM and ROM memory in the last chapter, but now we need to look at other types of memory. In this chapter we'll look at secondary and tertiary storage. This table shows the different sizes involved when buying a storage device and it helps you to see and understand the difference in sizes when you're looking at different storage devices. So just use this table to do a little recap. Remind yourself of the difference in sizes and which one's bigger than the other. So there are three different types of storage. We've already looked at primary storage, which is where the memory that the CPU accesses quickly and directly, like registers, RAM, ROM and the cache. This is the fastest type of memory and is usually volatile. You could think of it as short-term memory. So, if you think of yourself as a computer, whatever you're working on at that time is in your short-term memory. This would be st stored in the RAM. Secondary storage, which is what we're mainly focusing on here, is non-volatile and is where we save our files and programs when they're not in use. Tertiary storage is non-volatile and is used for more long-term storage that you don't want to access quickly. You would use this for maybe backups and archiving files. Magnetic hard disks or hard disk drives are the most common modern internal storage devices in computers and laptops. These are what you will find in most of the computers that you use today. The drives are made up from stacks of magnetised metal disks which spin around at thousands of revolutions per minute. The computer stores data magnetically in what we call sectors. The computer accesses the sectors using a moving arm, a little bit like the old record players. Hard disks are generally long lasting and reliable but if you drop them you can corrupt or lose the data. You can also get portable hard drives which people use to back up data or to work in different locations. Solid state drives are a newer version of a hard disk drive. They're very similar in that they're often found inside a PC or laptop. However, these have no moving parts and use a type of flash memory to save the data. Because the data is saved in flash memory, it's quicker to access and often you see significantly faster loading speed. SSDs often have the operating system and applications saved on them, so your system loads faster and you can run your programs much quicker. So I've just used the term flash memory to describe a solid state drive. Flash memory is used for other storage devices such as USB pen drives and SD memory cards. They're commonly used for portability or to add extra storage to cameras, tablets and smartphones. Flash memory is non-volatile, which means if you turn off the computer, the data is still kept safe for long periods of time. So which hard drive or which type of hard drive do you decide on when buying or building a computer system? Let's have a little look at a comparison between the two. So a comparison of the hard drive to the solid state drive shows that there's benefits to having each and a benefit to having both in the same computer system. Hard drives are a lot cheaper to buy and they have a lot more storage capacity. They also last a lot longer. SSDs run a lot faster than a hard drive and they're more efficient and more durable. They're also silent running. So an argument is to have both inside your computer system. You could have your operating system running on the SSD drive and all of your files and documents saved on a separate hard disk drive. This would mean that you get the best of both worlds. On occasion, I've seen on past exam papers questions talking about the difference between storage media and a storage device. So what exactly is the difference between storage media and a storage device? The media is what describes what actually holds the data like a CD disk or a DVD disk. The device is what reads or writes to those disks. Another form of secondary storage is optical disks where the data is burned onto the surface of a disk. So what's the term optical? Well it gets the name because it uses a laser and an optical lens to read the data. You can now get CDs, DVDs and Blu-ray discs, each with their own main purposes. CDs are the smallest, 
and hold around 700 megabytes of data. These are usually used for music. DVDs hold 4.7 gigabytes and usually hold video files such as movies. Blu-rays hold between 25 and 50 gigabytes of data and hold usually high definition video and modern computer games. You can get three different types of each disc. Read only, writable and rewritable. Read only means that once the data is on the disc it cannot be altered in any way. Writable is usually a blank disc that allows you to burn files onto them. And rewritable allows you to erase the data and add more data on. So a big question for you, is this the death of discs? I would say that their use is definitely declining. There was one type of storage device called a floppy disk used many years ago, which is now what you would call obsolete. Obsolete means that nobody really uses them anymore. You very rarely find a disk drive that will open floppy disks on modern computers. One of the reasons why they're obsolete is because they hold so little data. You could barely save one Word document on a floppy disk drive. So, with CDs, DVDs, are they now dead? That's the big question. So people are definitely using them less and less because software and games always used to be bought from a store and saved on CDs or DVDs. Nowadays, because everyone's internet connection is so fast, people are choosing to stream the videos or download the music, which is much more convenient and actually saves on production costs for the companies. If they don't have to produce the packaging and the CDs themselves, it's much more beneficial for the company to be able to allow users to download the software. Another bonus is that you can never really run out of stock if the software is downloadable. So finally, let's take a look at tertiary storage. What if you need to back something up but don't need to use it very often? We can use something called archiving. Magnetic tape is used for large amounts of data. It's very cheap in comparison to other storage devices. It's saved on a series of plastic cassettes with tape inside them. It's very, very slow if you try to find your data, but when it finds that particular point in the archive where you've, where you've saved it, you can restore it from the backup quite quickly. This type of storage is used in large organisations or in big libraries across the country. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please like and subscribe. Bye.